Welcome to the Daily B Show, episode 76 with Matty B and Rachel Coravier. So guys, thanks for jumping on nice and early today. Um, I, I met Rachel uh, end of, end to, uh, when was it? It would have been about, around about, I think, September, October last year. And um, it was it was through the, the network um, that I formed with, doing coaching through Christopher Duncan um, and the Fast Track Business Crew. And here anyway, she comes. And Rachel's really been there as one of my mentors and supports with respect to um, jumping on these live videos, putting together webinars, putting together my coaching program, putting together um, my mentality when it comes to um, coaching and and taking on new clients. And, and she's just in her own field and in her own coaching space um, and she's just a little pocket diamond right that I'm loving. And, <laughs> hey. Hello. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to the, finally be on the show. <laughs> I reckon it's been a long time coming. The branding behind you looks awesome, by the way. I remember we were talking yeah. about that last time we got up. This is just my little home office, but I have the camera nice and close when I'm on a Facebook Live because it always ends up being further away. Oh, uh, True. Yeah. It helps that you've got a beautiful face for it as well. So that's good. Well, you know, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's, yeah, I'm, it's funny that you say that because I don't actually like my face on camera, but, you know, you do what you've got to do. Well, that's all right. It's not, it's not for you to like. It's for us to like, isn't it? It's exactly right. It's exactly right. So for those who don't know you, I gave you a little bit of a spiel and a little bit about how you're doing, but share a little bit about who you are, what you're up to, and a bit of introduction. Cool. Well, my name's Rachel, which you guys know. And yeah, as you said, we met doing um, another program because we both have the same coach. We're doing some of the same seminars. And I, I'm the six-figure coach. So pretty much where, yeah, where I specify, I have been mindset and performance right up until this year, which has been, you know, my bread and butter, which is what I'm best at. Um, but coming into this year, I was chatting with Chris, my coach, and and we said, Rach, how did you even hit 100K? Like, we were just having a coffee. And he said, how did you even do it? Because unfortunately, most coaches won't, which I'm super grateful that I'm here. And I just told him, I told him, you know, the, the, the four steps that I did to, like, I just did one thing. I just sell from free challenges, create a great offer, sell from a free challenge because we don't have ad budgets, right? And he's like, really? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's all I did, man. Like, I just kept crushing free challenges and, like, getting people to know me through content. He's like, He's like, we need, to, we need to show people that. So that's when the six-figure strategy was born. So, you know, I love saying I'm not your guru because I'm not pretending to show you all the shit. I just show you the one six-figure strategy, and that's what I do. And it works. It works. It does work. It's cool. Yeah, fantastic. And <clears throat> so how long have you been coaching now all up? Probably about three years, maybe more, because I had a business yeah. before this one that failed. So I don't know. Do you count that? <laughs> <clears throat> well, yeah, okay. As in coaching space as well. <clears throat> no, I had. Well, it was with a multi-level marketing company, so I did a lot of speaking, and you know, you pretend you're a coach when you're in multi-level marketing, right? So, a bit of that. Okay, cool, fantastic. And look, I, was, I think I've been through five or six multi-level marketing companies. So, yeah, I'll just. <clears throat> um, it's not just the company's fault, the mate. On the belt. <laughs> 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 Uh, beautiful. And so, what's one of the um, what's one of the things that you really love about coaching that you that really fills your cup in in being in this space? Yeah, true. Because I was just—it's so funny you say that. Because I was just having a conversation with a lady just before I got on here of what really pisses me off about coaching. So well, let's it's start good with that. that you, let's start with that. Do you, well, I don't know. Like, how real Fuck do you yeah. want me to be? Because I could just nah, lose, drop the I could bombs, just cut swords. Fuck you. Yeah. Well. Because I'm going to do a Facebook live video on it, but I might as well just go here. You might as well. We're going to see it on Daily yeah. B because I know this show is, you know, international, worldwide, right? Um, exactly. Right. The thing that upsets me the most, and by all means, this is not a dig. I just don't like where most coaches are coming from. And what I mean by that is there's this woman. I'm just going to give you an example. I won't name names, but there's this amazing woman that's come to me and said, Rach, <clears throat> I'd love to do your program. So cool. And she found out the price and she said, I've got no money. And I was like, that's interesting. So we looked into it. And she's yep. been to four other coaches now. She spent 20000 yep. with one coach. She spent 4000 with another coach. She spent $1,000 a month with another coach. So she had the money, 
And every single one of these coaches, none of them have actually taught her anything to do with how to start a coaching business. They've all just sucked her in that she's so broken. She needs more healing. She needs more spiritual awakening. She needs more love and light before business will happen. And I just want to, I want to go out there and I absolutely want to just backhand these coaches who tell you that mindset is everything. I'm the mindset coach saying this. But I tell you one thing, if you wake up tomorrow and you don't even know your market or your niche, who the fuck are you going to sell to? Yeah. And I, like, I'm lost because this woman literally said, I don't have a dollar left. The first question out of my mouth yeah. said, well, who's your market? Who's, your, who's the client that you serve? And she goes, what do you mean? I don't know. And I'm just like, I've, I kind of want to give a, a bit of an F you to all the coaches out there that just go, oh, if you know hypnosis, you'll know how to start a business. No, you won't. If you, if you just do some soul clearing, you'll, all the clients will come to you. No, they fucking won't. You've got to, like, they just won't, man. Like, you've got to do 50. I'm, I do mine to every single day and I meditate and I do it every single day. But I honestly think the reason why I got to six figures in two years was as a coach, which never happens, because for the first year, I literally head down, bum up and did that grinding shit of finding my niche, making an offer, calling people. And then when I could come up for some air, I looked around and thought, great, how can I optimize myself? Like, where's this notion? There's this bullshit notion that in the last five years, business is all about if you clear some beliefs, it's going to happen because it just won't. Oh, it's it just a won't. secret, yeah. You've got to do both. I, I honestly think you've got to have both, but everyone's just like, this poor woman literally would have spent 30 grand and she's, and she's learned how to clear her chakras or something. She's learned how to meditate. She's learned how to... Um, I mean, I, gar- I know you have to go do, you know, if you want, you've got to go do NLP and learn your skills, 100%. But then she came to me after all of that. She couldn't even clarify who her client was. She hasn't even made one sale. I'm not, o- I'm not okay with that shit. I'm not. Hmm. Don't we become and- coaches to serve people and to make money and, and live great lives? No one's doing it. Anyway, rant. I think, I think underlying it all, we become coaches um, for our own state of self-healing or, or our own, our own, um, our own journey of um, learning and, and, and educating ourselves in in the form of. Do you think that's what a coach state. is, though? No. Not yeah, on that's the what I mean. Because you don't. Yeah. Um, like, what's another industry I'm thinking of? I don't know, but I believe if you're a coach, you. I mean, you know, I'm always on the growth journey. Fuck, I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone else by any means. I'm always well, on the growth journey, but I'm just smart enough to know that you've also got to learn a bit of business. <laughs> like, that's all I'm saying. Like, yeah, fuck everyone, yeah. So everyone define just, a coach for us in your, in your words. A coach, a coach is in my, and by all means, this is very much personal opinion. It is not, it is not, doesn't have to be truth. But my opinion is she a coach is someone. Yeah. <laughs> my opinion <laughs> of a coach is someone who's done what they are going back to teach you in. They have done it and they fully understand how to then coach that back. So I don't like, and I believe you can start, you need to start somewhere. So I started in mindset coaching because I did, I failed a 10 year golf career and then had to turn my own emotional state and optimal state around before I could coach it. And I kept learning, of course, but I'd done so much work that I didn't even realize And then I became a coach and I did not start showing people how to run a six figure business literally until I hit the dollar in the account. I literally didn't. So is it then, is it, is it the fault of the, sorry to cut you off, but is it the fault of the people that are um, going through it or, or do you feel like they should be taking more responsibility and actually seeking out and doing their due diligence on their coaches or have you Mm. found that there are actually a lot of people that are spruiking one thing that haven't actually got the experience in it? I think it's a whole, it's a soup of shit, really. Like, and it's unfortunate, but it's, but don't you agree? Like I, <clears throat> the client has to take 99% of responsibility, 100%. The coach does have to take the other 1% of responsibility. I completely agree. So the, every single coach is just out there to do the, what they're best at. I'm so cool with that. I'm not saying everyone has to coach what I coach. If you're the best at clearing chakras, I love that shit. Go and do it. But I just think, I hate when a coach puts out the notion into the world that if you just do this, everything will be fine when they know it's not the full truth. That's all I'm saying. 
you know, yeah, like yeah. I don't go to my yoga studio down the road three times a week. I don't go to the yoga studio thinking that that's going to solve my business. Yeah. I go to the yoga studio to solve how unfit and how unflexible and how retarded I am. Right. Like I know what well, the problem you is. You yeah. I'm so unflexible. It's really, <laughs> like you don't go, don't go to a manifesting program. And that manifesting coach tells you that you can have 20 K months by doing this because it's not the whole truth. It's a half truth, half truth. Yeah. And so that's why I just say when people come to me, all I wanted to do was develop a program that I literally just show you one thing that created a hundred K that does consistently. And one, and I have the mindset program that backed me up. That's it. Yeah. I'm just, the personal development world is being flooded with, if you just do the clearing and the fixing, you'll be okay. And it is a bogus, bogus half truth, which I'm really unhappy that that's where the personal development world is going. Because business five years ago, you fucking got up and you had to, you had to take out a $200,000 loan just to buy the restaurant you wanted to do up. Like, could you imagine if you just sat at home and, and meditated on it? Like, it's ludicrous. It's just ludicrous. Customers, customers. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I just want to make it completely clear that it's a half truth. I still, you have to be aligned. You absolutely have to be. But it's, it's only half. It's only half. So. Absolutely. So. Yeah. You weren't always this um, big whiz bang coaching pro tell me where this all started and and before you went through really a lot of these trials and mm. tribulations that found you here where you are because i'm sure you know 10 15 years ago this is not where you envisioned you, yourself sitting um no no give us a bit of a backstory of where well, that's a, it, yeah cool it's a good 10 15 years ago i would have been pretty young um, no, but I actually started out when I was 10. Yeah, because I'm not that old. I'm 27. But when I was 10, 9, 8, 9 or 10, I can't remember. I started playing golf, funny enough. And yep. so <coughs> leading right up until 19, I played semi-professional golf. And I was supposed to get two. Well, I did get two scholarships to go play for Ohio State University, right? Yeah. Um, and turn pro Ooh, over there. And so I gave that up. I quit. I quit golf because um, I had really bad anxiety and it got to the point where I could no longer actually feel the golf club to hit the ball. And what do you so, mean? yeah, well, like my <coughs> body would be so anxious, like physical wow. anxiety that I couldn't connect the club to the ball. And wow. this is playing, yeah, this is playing at national level. And I, so it's like having the yips, right? And so I walked off the golf course and I quit and I said no to the scholarships and, Moved out of home. I did a lot of dumb things to try and Such as? move through that. I, well, year two, every single day of year 12, I would have smoked pot. I'm, pre, I'm sure <laughs> most people would probably know that. One. But, like, that's what I mean. I would numb it. So if you ask me, do I expe did I expect to be here? No. I expected to not even, like, sort of be alive at that stage. But um, And then I did that. And then I left home. after As soon as I left school, left home, lived in this house with like six other guys with no doors. It was probably it was the worst decision ever. Um, gave up the golf career. And then I, you know, I got the little bit of drive back. So I went into <coughs> a little marketing business um, with a good friend of mine, obviously, who took me to it. And I was like, yes, here we go. Like, here's my way out of my shitty little life. But it, it didn't happen then either because the mindset was the same. I was still this broken... You know, I, I just had really bad anxiety and a lot of those things. So that was my journey. Then can you paint the journey? Can, can you paint a bit of a picture of like the depths of that anxiety for you and really yeah, what was coming up for you, how that felt? Yeah, well, like the the, the I'm sure a lot of you understand what like sport is and and what sort of level playing at a national level would be. So can you imagine that I was in a tournament, so game day, I was on the golf course. It was a tournament. Um, every, it was Victorian State or something tournament. And I'm supposed to be playing, like I don't know how many of you understand golf, but I was off a handicap of two. So you're supposed to score pretty well, right? Um, and that was when I was 16. And I couldn't feel the golf club. So there's a point where the anxiety, how many of you get the shakes? Like I would get the yeah. shakes so bad so bad and my mind would just run out of control and the thoughts that that would be was you're not good enough to be here you're not good enough to be here you're not good enough as that girl next to you you're not good enough like you're not going to make state team next week even though my physical skill 
was up to that standard. I'd make state team five years in a row. The head was like, you're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. You're not going to America. You're not going to beat this girl. You're not going to play well today. You're not going to get to go home and tell your friends you had a great score. Like the, the yeah, self battle, well. you just cut yourself up. Like I would go home. I remember these days I would go <laughs> home and I'd lock myself in the bathroom and just taunt myself with how bad my golf score was. Yeah. Like, true. yeah. Like the, like, not, I don't talk about this story often, but it would be like, you know how these days you're supposed to be in the mirror and say your affirmations and how much you love yourself and stuff. Right. Um, back then it would be abusing myself on how bad I'd played that day. And that was my life but until the, I quit. But the part two for a 16 year old, that's how, yeah. do, how, do you, how do you speak to that little girl now looking back at yourself? Oh, I think she's pretty cool. Like she, it's good that she made it. Let's just say that much. Cause we didn't, yeah, we didn't think she would. So that's what I mean. 16, 17, 18. That's what life was like because I played golf. It's like, people would know yeah. this if you played sport at a high level as a kid, it's awesome. Like they were, they were the best times of my life, but it's also such a weird dynamic for a kid. Like it just kills you. Yeah. It really just, yeah. yeah, it takes you to a whole different place. But I have to say that like coming yeah. through now, this is why I get to be so like it builds you for business because in business it's fucking hard. Like it's the best thing you've done, but it's so hard. Like I've had three people say no to me this morning and it's only 10 30. Like I haven't even had coffee yet. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. hard. And I think sports just brought me to that level. Once I could, once I could master my mind for a couple of years, um, I've got the sports mentality now, which I'm forever thankful for. But back then, yeah, that's what it would be like. It was shit. And then I took that into my first business. So what do you think I did? Same thing. Yeah. I thought you could do it without a coach. I thought you could just start a multi-level marketing business, share it with your friends and people would come to you. Didn't work. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah. that epiphany there between that business, I also took the same mentality into a lot of my relationships. I probably bro broke down maybe three relationships that I probably didn't have to. Um, because I was just victim. I would just punish myself. And of course that's shit in a relationship. And then that was when, yeah, I went, I went and did life coaching and I did the whole diploma and stuff just for myself. Like I was like, I need, cause it's in the classroom, you know, you, you back and forth. And then I got myself a coach. And then from there, after that, after I'd done a lot of training, I started my mindset business, um, which, you know, I spent $60,000 on dollars on coaches, most years to build myself up and then now finally it's like okay well how did I even I've sort of come up for air and thought how did I even do all of that and now that's to here <laughs> is that a good story yeah it, yeah, it yeah. There really was and you can feel the emotion in it as well from, yeah I don't talk about it often I feel like it's been a while ago yeah um still very real though but was there a um a catalyst or a person or <clears throat> or some someone or something that sort of um, pointed you in that direction of, of working on your mindset like that? Or was that just something that you really just came across yourself and recognised? Or <clears throat> I think there's been a few catalyst people. There's been a few monumental people in my life at different stages. When I was 18 or 19, it would have been my best friend at the time who did stop me from killing myself. So at that's been a very monumental stage. And I think at that moment, not that, he, like, he didn't know anything about development at all. We used to sit there and just drink piss every night, but he'd always make sure I was at his house so I couldn't be anywhere else, which was a great thing. Um, but it was more just so, like, he just stopped me and he kept saying, no, you're going to the doctors. No, you're doing this. No, you're doing that. No, right, guess what? We're going for a ride today. Guess what? We're doing weights today. Like, just fucking got me back into the gym and just kept, like, nudging me and, like, oh, we're going out for dinner. Oh, we're doing this. You were doing this. Um, and sort of that pushed me a bit. And I think it got me to a place where I was like, I'm really not okay and unhappy, but I'm also like, fuck why? Like, I don't want this. So I think it was him that yeah. sort of steered me in the direction of like, come on, like, what are you doing? Like, we're not going to sit here. And then from there, yeah. then I moved into, um, a really good friend of mine who got me into the multi-level marketing. He was a very, very good friend of mine and a very, um, positive person. So you know, put, nudged me along again. And then the next person was probably, um, I had Zach Dixon as a coach. Most of you might know him. He sort of nudged me in a very strong direction, like the right direction. He really, 
Like I'd been building and then when I got to Zach, it was like, you either fucking change or you don't. And I was like, go. So that was like, yeah. that's when I really started to switch on and come back into some serious like strength. And now, so I feel like the pendulum's come back now and working with uh, Chris, it just takes you to a whole nother level that you've never even performed on before. So a very grounded yeah. high level. I went like, rah, like yeah. fucking go. And now to cool, man, you know what you're doing. Let's just grow, 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 grow. So there's been a few. There's been about five in people. They've all been males, funny enough. Yeah, interesting, hey. Hmm. What's your um, a book or two that you can recommend to people that's had a big impact on your life or that you might be reading now that's impacting you? A book I have read is called You Can't Hurt Me. Have you guys all heard that? I like it's a new one out at the moment. What's his name? No. Matthew Go No, his no name's not Matthew, is it? Goggins? David Goggins. He's David Goggins, David Goggins. Yeah. yeah. So I love that book two reasons. One, it just gives you so much motivation to say like, you, like, you honestly get one life. And if you're not prepared to go, like, if you're not prepared to give yourself a go, you're going to you're gonna lose. And so it's just so motivational. Yeah. Like, because I, I drive long distance to get to my partner's house. So I read yeah. a lot of books when um, I'm driving. And I just cry the whole time with, like, drive, you know. So that's that book. But yeah. what's another good book? He's oh, a beast. Renee Brown. Oh, he's such a beast. And it's good. Like, I know you don't need that type of rah-rah motivation, but it doesn't pump <laughs> me up like that. It just... Like, he's rah-rah and really, because he's a Navy SEAL. Um, but what I take from it, he's a beast, isn't he? He's a, he's a Navy human. He's a yeah. Human. Like, he would just eat a lion for breakfast. But it doesn't, yeah. like, it doesn't pump me up like that. It just, it just fills you with drive. Yeah. Like, shit, I'm going through mm. nothing. You better keep going. Um, yeah. But anything Brene Especially. Brown. Anything Brene yeah. Brown is. So they're polar opposites, aren't they? Yeah, mm. they really are. But Brene Brown is just a wizard with what she does and it just gives you so much insight. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. What do you believe above all else? Mm. Have you asked me this before? I feel like someone asked so. me this. Maybe. Um, Janelle said, what's it called? It's called You Can't Hurt Me by um, David Goggins. And the other book is Brene Brown, Power of Vulnerability. By the way, the reason I like Brene Brown stuff is any, any coaches out there who struggle to articulate what they do, she explains emotions better than anyone. Um, yeah. What was the question? What do I believe above all else? Like all, all else. No pressure. Um, okay. The first thing that came <laughs> to my mind was relationships are the most important thing. That's it. Beautiful. I think it's I the only it. purpose in the world is to have better relationships. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Expand the capacity for happiness with that's those it. around you. Yeah. Like you're a human on a planet with other humans. So whether that's a sales <laughs> call or getting married, our only purpose is to have better, better relationships, I find. Yeah, absolutely. What's your favorite way to express yourself? Um, it's a great question. I don't know. I do a, I do a number of weird things. I do a, my bet. I do a number of different things. Like I quite enjoy cooking. Show us. Show us. Don't tell us. Mm. I don't know the answer to that. I do. A <laughs> we, I do some weird hobbies. Like I like to build things. I like to cook, and I go to yoga. So I do. You're an all rounder. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I actually don't know and, the answer to that and question. And tee off on a par too. Have you gone golfing lately? <clears throat> yeah, I've been playing golf a bit actually. I play, um, that's a good way to express myself. I quite like that. But I go to virtual golf. So I don't play on a golf course. What? I go to virtual <laughs> golf. Nah, nah, nah. Because I'll crack the shits and I'll snap clubs. You know, like it's just the verdict. It's just the simulator. It's the screen. And then you can get your beer yeah. and just sit behind. It's the best. A nerdy, sporty chick. I love it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of from all corners. I don't know. Weird. Yeah, you, really you really are. And what is next on your personal journey of evolution and growth? Oh, personal journey. The next is a lot more patience. Like I yeah, have, cool. like I'm one for the long game. You and me both. Like I'm definitely one for the long game, but you just don't know how long it is. And so I'm really working on Eternal. being a. Yeah, it's forever. And you just like people who do a three month program and think they should have a business. Try three years before you even get someone to like your video. That's what it's like. Um, so just massive <laughs> patience. 
Yeah, I did two years of videos. People go, how do you, how are you so good on video? And I did a video a day for two years before people started liking them. I remember um, doing and a now, um, business diploma. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah. And, and my teacher was talking about three to five years, bef- like expect three to five years before breaking even when he was teaching us yep. about what breaking even is. <laughs> like, if you're lucky. I, I don't, this business isn't for me. <laughs> Did you see, I did an interview just the other day with Michael Lane. Do you know who Michael Lane is? Yeah. The director of success resources. So, cause I yeah. asked him the same question. I was like, in this day and age where everyone thinks they deserve a business after three months, what did he really think it was? Do you know what, do you know what his answer was? What? 15 years. Fuck. Yeah. If you're yeah. like, you get little successes along the way. Like it's not zero. You're supposed to have enough money to get you through 15 years. But he said, if you actually want to perfect and really be the leader in your space, you better be prepared to do something for 15 years without a massive return or you shouldn't be doing it. Like, and that's what I want every single one of your listeners to hear. If you walk out Mm. off this phone now and you know that you wouldn't be doing this for 15 years and you're only doing it for money to get through to your next holiday, stop fucking doing it. Or just hold a realistic expectation. Oh, 100%. Like, that's what I mean. Like, it's just going to take time. And I think that's a great thing. I don't get what people hate about time. I don't want to be, I don't want to be the best I've ever been at 30. And then, like, for the rest of my life, I just am lost. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. The growth's the best bit, even though I hate it. Like, it gets really frustrating. It's the best bit. When I moved out of my small little country town that I grew up in. Where'd you grow up? I was baffled. Merbu North in South Gippsland. A couple of hours southeast of Melbourne. Awesome cool. town, great brewery. Go check it out. But um, <laughs> I was baffled that people didn't want to leave the town. I was baffled that people didn't want more and want to strive for bigger things. And it really, like, fucked with my head. I, I just did not understand how people did these, these just live like this, right? Yeah. Um, but understanding compassion that there really is, like, almost 8 billion people and every single one of them is different to every single one that's been before them and will come after them. It's just like that infinite experience is all, all happening all at once. And, and everyone's just an example of, of the infinite. And so it's like, you, yeah, that, that really instilled some humility and, and compassion within me when I, I was shown that by a, by a really smart coach as well. Mm. Um, Isn't yeah. it interesting that people live different lives? That blows my mind. Mm. Like I'm sitting here in this room doing this. Doing it. Yeah, it's crazy. And you walk down the street and someone just passes you by that are literally living a whole different the reality. Shit, yeah. Like, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's like that, that type of shit blows my mind. <laughs> it really does. It does. I, like, I have the funniest conversations with my girlfriend because she's like, Rachel, why do you think of this shit? I'm like, doesn't that blow your mind? Like you just walked yeah. past someone and they're, they're in a whole different realm. <laughs> That that actually, um, I think was something I had to really tap into as well with the coaching stuff is because I did take the way I live for granted and, and just Mm. thought everyone was going through what I'm going through and really had to to tap into, Oh, people actually do have these problems and and they do think like this. It's not just on the TV shows that they're (laughs) fucked. Yeah. True. Um, Mm. So can you share your four steps to six to six figures for coaches? Yeah. So the first step is clarity. You've got to be clear on your market. You've got to be clear on the client you want to work with. I could talk about this for days. The second thing is you've got to know how to do content and content properly. I have like this four-step quadrant. So you know Chris's quadrant system, right? So you've got to be able to do content properly and you've got to be able to do it a lot. And the next thing is you've got to be able to convert people from just Facebook sidewalk, like all these amazing people that have been coming on your show, they're just, they're just people sitting there, right? You've got to be able to convert them to your group or into something. You've got to be able to subscribe them to something. Yeah. So, and then the last (laughs) thing is challenges. You have to be able to create an education system. So I subscribe. I, my only purpose is to get you into a challenge because I know in a five day free challenge of mine, I will educate the shit out of you that you will just want to buy my thing. And it's because how I set it up, not because my program's better than anyone else's, but the way I leverage a challenge allows someone to go, fuck, 
I'm so clear and I want to buy that thing. Whereas the rest doesn't do that. So it's just a domino effect. You've got to know your market. Like guys being a transformational coach these days is not okay. Like who, who are you transforming? Where are you transforming them to? Like what amazing things do you do with that person? Then you've got a domino into content. If you are not being seen, I just said, I don't like my face on camera, but the risk of not being seen massively outweighs that. Like you, you're just on the camera, on the camera, on the camera, and people are like, shit, who's Maddie B? The next thing you've domino, you've got to find a way to convert people. I do that groups, then into a challenge. So, you know, a great, I know my market, just six people who need a plan to get six figures. They domino into a lot of my content, then they'll fall into my group. And then a free challenge is where I get to educate you guys because ads on a small budget is quite hard um, and getting someone's attention is quite hard. So you've got to create a five-day education system. One, two, three, four, buy. I love it. It's called, the buy, it. it's called the buying cycle method just for fun. The buying cycle method. Yeah, because you create okay. buyers instead of having to be the pushy salesperson. Yeah, true. <clears throat> Um, can, can you share the, um, the quadrants of creating content? Because I really love that model and I think a lot of people miss the marks. So yeah. On what I'm actually doing a whole webinar on it. I don't know. How cool is that? Do I have a That's pen? very cool. Is this going to be backwards for you guys though? Yeah, but that's all right. I'll get the gist. Cool. Yeah, so there's four quadrants. This is, I'm going to do it tonight. If anyone wants it, you can just ask Matt and he'll send you the training. But so the first one is big picture. It's backwards, but that's his big picture, right? You've got to start with a big picture story. Like, hey, to, today I'm talking about, you know, why the universe is all connected to each other, right? You've got to start with a big picture. You've got to start with emotion and story. The next thing you go into... That says big picture steps. So you go from, you go from big picture emotional, then you go cool. So... You know, the big picture is all about the universe, but I've also found that there's four steps that really, really show us how to connect in this universe. So you break it down, and then the fourth step is you just go steps. Third step. So now you're in logical. So you've gone emotional, half emotional, down to logical. So you go, cool, the, the whole universe is connected. And I've noticed that four things really break that down. These four steps are, one, the buying cycle method, two, the this, three, the that, four, the this, five, the this. And so you go logical and then you go action. And then you go action. So you go, cool, guys, I want you to go out today and just experience step number one, journal about it. Let me know how you go in a week. And then you're there. So can you see how you can't just talk big picture story all the time because logical people say, what the fuck are you talking about? And they don't understand it. But you start with emotion, you paint the picture, then you slowly bring in the steps that would make up that picture and then you make sure you logically run people through the steps that you're talking about. So all of a sudden your big picture is now making sense on how people can do it. And then you set them like, hey, here's a case study I did on it. Or, hey, guys, go and do the action step I just told you. So you started talking about the universe and then you've ended with, hey, guys, the first step to connecting to the universe is go do exactly this one question. And it just is content that people understand both logical and emotional in short. Yes. I love it. That's why Thanks. you have a whiteboard here. It is. It is. Mm. I've got a white sky. I just draw in the clouds. Yeah, you just draw it. You just draw in the universe, you know. Yeah. So exactly. that's just creating content that people understand because <laughs> you can't just talk big picture. You can't just talk how to all the time. You've got to paint the four-step quadrant to walk them into getting what yeah. they want out of the video. Yeah. Yeah. You would be beautiful. Well said. And I know whoever's watching will, will take a lot away from that. And the rest of our chat, is there a last bit of advice or words of wisdom that you'd like to drop and, and share with your audience? Yeah, the first thing that came to my head, because when you started talking, I was like, no, there's not. But one thing that just happened, <clears throat> can people please, and I say this wholeheartedly with all of my heart, this is the one thing that I want for people. Please don't think that going out and doing some of this businessy stuff, whether it's tech for you, whether it's sales calls, whether it's none of that is hustle. The notion that putting in the work is hustle is 100% bullshit. 135 billion percent bullshit. It is just the action steps. If you wanted to be a basketball player, 
you'd pick up the ball, you'd walk to the court and you'd shoot some hoops. We don't call that hustle, do we? That's just what, a, that's just the steps. And so I just want, I really want to drive home to people. I know that it's so scary when you start and you look up to someone like me and I'm intimidating. I'm actually not. I'm the biggest teddy bear you know. I just want to be real for you. But do you know what I mean? People will look up and they'll look at this manifesting course and go, oh, I'm scared. I could do that. I could do that. Or they look up at someone who's telling them to do some action steps and go, oh, no, can't do the hustle. Guys, it is not. I work fucking 20 hours a week, but it's just the right 20 hours. And that's all I want to impart with the people. What was in quadrant two? Okay, cool. So quadrant one is big picture. This is backwards, sorry. Big picture. Quadrant two was big picture, but you're starting to you're starting to introduce the steps. So you might be like, hey, the whole universe is connected. The whole universe is connected by these four things that I found. Hey, guess what? Those four things logically are. Yeah? What challenge are you facing right now? Is that me? Does she mean me? Yeah. I'm facing a patience challenge. At the moment, I'm <laughs> working on... Um, like I had my biggest month, this in, I'm just going to be transparent. I haven't actually told anyone this. In January, yep. I had my biggest month that I've ever had in my business, which was Woo. a lot of money. Awesome. Yeah. So you, you've had this. And then in Feb, whatever month we're in, February and March, I'm working on growing a marketing campaign. And when you grow a marketing campaign, that doesn't mean cash until you've built up. So my biggest challenge at the moment is really, really eating my humble pie in the fact that I'm trying to build an asset. In January, I just sold some stuff and you're like, yay, awesome. But it comes in waves. And so now I'm build, like I'm building a funnel that people take four weeks to go through. Like, so my biggest challenge right now is just being patient and being okay with some serious things you've got to do to grow your business that take a serious lot of time. I need to be patient about it because I'm, I struggle to be patient. So what's some of the things you do to manage your, your own patience? What are some steps you find yourself putting into place so you don't get overwhelmed or it doesn't take a hold, a hold of you? Um, well, quite a few. One, I meditate a lot. But two, you've got like, I hate to say it, but you've got to have a coach. I literally message my coach every single day. Not kidding you. I'll ping, you know, I, I ping Chris every single day. We're on the phone most days, even if it's for two minutes. Just because if you have someone there who can see the logic from your bullshit, like we have yes. our coaching call once a week and he actually gives me the steps and I go and do the steps. Yeah. But you've just got to have someone there who is yeah. higher than you that can say, Rach, I get it, but calls me for five yeah. minutes and goes, Rach, I get it, but you made money last month. Are you going to be a little bit crybaby this month or are we growing? And you go, yep, we're growing. Cool. So, what? yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. So just having that person to talk to, you've got to make sure there's a coach yeah. there. And who literally knows what they're fucking talking about. Please don't just get a friend because, you know, friends are there for a bounce off, but not necessarily for the logic. And just making sure I do my stuff. Like I've got to go to the gym. I've got to meditate. And I've just got to keep asking someone to tell me to see, you know, the forest from the trees. You just need a consistent reminder. Yeah, 100%. Babe, thank you so much for joining us. You've been amazing. It's been good. Always. I've loved it. Yeah. Yeah, it really has. And it's been too long coming, but um, yeah, we'll catch up again soon. Is there, are you, are you running a challenge coming up soon that you can share with anyone or? You, anyone who like wants that? to do the challenge, it is the one that I've just done is currently automated. So you're more than welcome to go through all five days. They come to your messenger one at a time, just shoot Matt a message or myself a message. And I Could will you put a link like, in the comments. Yeah, for sure. Um, Leak alert, I might be doing one in April, maybe. April Leak may alert. be the next live one. But that, what I mean it. is I just push everyone to um, the automation one, which you can still comment in the group and I'm still there responding to all your comments. So absolutely, yeah. go through my five-day free challenge where I show you how to create hungry buyers using a free challenge. It's like Inception. <laughs> is there um, – and do you have your coaching page or just go to your personal page or where can they find that? Um, just send me a message on my personal page because then I'd, I want to talk to you first. Most definitely want to see who you are. Um, Janelle, I'll post up in a minute. Or when I send you the link and you click on it, it is, automa it is automated and you'll get an automated message from me every day. But if you write back to that, I still see it and respond personally. So just talk to me first and I can point you in the direction of what you want to find for sure. 
Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. You need to think of more weird questions where we can just have half an hour of just those weird questions that I struggle to answer. <laughs> Do you want me to go through some weird questions? We'll just one I'm more. A weird one more. I can bring up some weird shit pretty quick. <laughs> just do one more. <clears throat> okay. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing you've done recently? How recent? In the last 15 years. Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> oh, what, what's the most embarrassing thing stuff. I've done recently? Okay. <laughs> I might as well go for it. You know how sometimes when you just say, like you just yell and shit at a mate, like "fuck you" or "you're an idiot" or "you're fat" and it's all just a joke. Yeah. I was having one of those yelling like jokey things with a friend, but they were actually fat, and then I just yelled out and said it, and I was like, "fuck." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like you yell out, like "you're a loser," "you're a fatty," but they're like they're not. But I was having that conversation with someone who was actually overweight, and I really regret saying it, but I just yelled it out. Did you and see like, the, the waters no, all up in their eyes? Oh, yeah, it was horrific. It was the worst. And I was at a bar with 15 other people. Fat people? No. Been lynched. But she was like one of the most lovely shit. Like, I didn't actually mean it at all. I was just like, yeah. fuck, Rachel. That's one of those things where I didn't think about my dry humour coming out of my mouth. What's your weirdest habit? Um... I don't know if it's weird, but I take showers a lot. When I get overwhelmed, I have a shower. Ew. <laughs> but I think that's the only one I can think of that's sort of weird. But like, so when you yeah, say a lot, like how much are we talking? Three or four a day. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's it. If I'm overwhelmed, or if I'm like, fuck, I've got to, I've got to get my head together to go do videos, or I've got to get my head together to think about this thing, I'll go and have a shower. So yeah. Don't you always so clean? Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, that's a weird habit I find. Okay, what is the grossest thing you've e ever eaten? I'm really bad with textures, so I don't even think I'd be up for the challenge for a lot of the things that I've been. Yeah. Maybe like a teaspoon of cinnamon or something, because other than that, I wouldn't be able to eat them weird things. I went to um, Cambodia and I had a whole plate of um, there was like frogs scorpions tarantulas um snake see i would have i wouldn't have even gone to that restaurant because i can't even look at a picture of a spider no. so i would not have been there it's like it was like that big yeah like stick. you like a fucking lollipop like that's what i mean i couldn't even google images of a spider i couldn't i can't even do that so i would have been fucking out of there that is very good to know I yeah. uh, will take advantage of that information. No, you will not. Later. You better not. <laughs> you better not. Will. Are you going to Ignition? Are you going to, uh, you going to Gold Coast in March or are you not coming to that? June, February, March. Um, Ignition's on. Possibly. I'll be down in Victoria. I'll be in Victoria. Yeah. So, guys, oh, Ignition, okay. jump onto that. That's the marketing um, course Chris does, isn't it? Yeah, but the, I'm just going to the weekend thing where we film content for four days. Okay, guys, look up Christopher Duncan and Fast Track Business as well. If you guys are in the coaching space or business in general, um, he really is amazing and, and him and his partner, Harriet, are doing some really good work with, with a lot of people. Um, do you have any questions for me? No, not yet because I've been so off guard. I haven't made any questions. Where, oh, okay, when really? are you going to run your first free challenge properly? I've already run the first free challenge, the first one that I copied you. But where, where that's was when it? I got, that's, that's when I got my that's when I got my first paid clients on board from the, the oh, free challenge. Oh, it works, doesn't it? It does yeah, work. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Great. There you 100%. go, guys. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You've just got to create awareness and buy it. That's why it works. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks, Anne. Love Thanks, it. guys, for watching. I had a bit amazing chat, and um, yeah, look, reach out to Rach. She's here. She's amazing to chat to. She's full of wisdom, knowledge, and she's a badass. She'll kick your ass in a gear if, if you don't do it yourself. Um, Pretty with much. a lot of love. So, yeah. Any final parting words you'd like to? Nah, share? just guys, go and do, no, go and work. go and make some money in your coaching business and find out how to bloody do that properly. That's all I'm saying. Because trust me, you'll feel so much prouder of yourself than just 
wishing around in this personal development pool. Go and do what you got to do. None of you are broken at all. Kumbaya's That's aren't going to make you dollars. No. I mean, you've got a kumbaya, but you've also got to get up tomorrow and turn that kumbaya into what you really wanted to be doing, which was coaching clients. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Cool. Thanks, All Thanks, right. Guys. See you, mate. Bye. Amazing day. Peace out.